Three, two, one, let's go. That's one small step to win. First of all, thank you very much for taking the time. Pleasure. And uh, having me here, it's, it's great. It's been a great day, even though we've had some delays. Yep. Um, hopefully, we can go on Sunday. That's um, what we hope. Yep. And, and I remember in the uh, press call on Wednesday, I asked uh, if, if you are having concerns about the FA getting back in time for the window, and you said, don't worry, it's going. Mm. Which I guess technically, <laughs> you're, still, you're, still, you're, still, you're still right about that. So I can't be mad yet. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Uh, why don't you talk a little bit just about kind of obviously it's a new, you know, pad and a new. I mean, these facilities, you know, fairly new. What have you learned from stuff down in New Zealand, mm-hmm. and how have you implemented that here, and maybe changed things in different ways to kind of make it work better? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest difference is, um, you know, we own and operate the entire range down in New Zealand, and we're in complete control of everything. Um, coming to a federal range where you're a guest on the range and. You know, uh, what's unique here is that, um, you know, we are, we are the launch vehicle provider. We work with the NASA range. NASA also works with FAA. So you've got to get a NASA range sign-off and an FAA sign-off. So um, it's like duplication and yeah. double the amount of work to, to get to a launch. Yeah. Um, so I think what we learned is um, the incredible value of your own private range is, you know, we just have uh, incredible flexibility to do what we do. Um, so uh, that, that's that's probably been one of the biggest learning curves is just um, you know, the complexities of actually operating out of a, out of a federal range. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and so then specifics on you know kind of the pad construction and pad infrastructure, mm. um, you know, with kind of some existing pad infrastructure, how have you kind of integrated with that from what you have already down at LC One? Yeah, so we've pretty much built it largely standalone. So we took um, we took LC One, um, then we made some improvements to LC One and we built LC Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will notice that LC Two has you know its own oxygen tanks, for example. Mm-hmm. Yep. So um, you know to to fire up the entire Antares liquid oxygen skid just to top off Electron, yeah. it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, so we yeah, just transfer yeah. some liquid oxygen over to to our tanks and just run it as we would with the range down in New Zealand. Absolutely. Um, so that, that is, that's very similar. And then we took all the learnings from the LC2 range, because you know, every range does things slightly different and has mm-hmm. certain requirements that are different. Uh, and we built LC, LC1B down in New Zealand. And then now LC1A down in New Zealand is, is, is down for maintenance, and we're upgrading that okay. to, to be the same as LC, LC2 or LC1B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all, all the pads are the same. Yeah. All the software is, is largely yeah. the same. All the operations are largely the same. So it's, it's fairly, um, it's fairly you know, straightforward and seamless to ship between pads from that perspective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so from here, what are you kind of looking for in terms of cadence once everything gets up and running? Well, look, I mean, uh, we, we have we have multiple launches scheduled for, for here next year. Um, it, it really comes down to how quick the range can turn. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we can uh, we can feed as many rockets into this facility yeah. as, as, it, as it can take. At the moment, um, there's kind of a soft ceiling of 12 launches a year, but, yeah. uh, you know, Everybody is, is keen to move past that, but um, you know, next year we, we have somewhere between four and six missions coming out of here. Um, there's another mission in January, um, so um, in Q1. So we have uh, we already have you know, pretty much rolled straight into, into the next mission out of here. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you mentioned uh, the other day in the press call that the next electron is about to arrive next week, mm. I believe. Yep, um, Christmas Day, I think it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a okay, nice present for somebody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, kind of what's the timeline like from, you know, rocket being shipped to here and then kind of turn around from here? You know, what are you expecting to kind of hit with that? Yeah, I mean, the, the transit time is, is somewhere between eight and ten weeks um, mm-hmm. from, from the New Zealand factory. Um, and the integration timelines are basically the same. Okay. I mean, we've launched, launched 30, plus, 30 plus of these, so it's, a, it's, it's just, you know, mm-hmm. the team has got it down pat. So, you know, in, in integration timelines and payload integration timelines are, are all consistent you know, here as they are down in New Zealand. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, this year, we've, since April, we've demonstrated one a month and mm. you know, we intend to continue with that way and yeah. increase on that next year. Yeah, exactly. And, and do you think with, obviously now, you know, wallops hopefully being up, up and online, do you think that'll kind of help with increase that cadence more? Uh, yes and no. I mean, we, we have we have basically the two pads in New Zealand, mm-hmm. um, so we we have all the infrastructure we need yeah. down there to support basically almost you know whatever mm-hmm. launch rate we choose. 
So, um, so we're not infrastructure infrastructure limited. While it is handy to have another pad operational here, um, it, it it doesn't it doesn't really certainly really change our ability to, to launch more. Okay, cool. Um, and then a little bit, and I know we've kind of discussed this throughout the day here, but talk more about the team here that's at Wobs and kind of how that's adjustment that adjustment been made. You know, how they come a lot of them come from New Zealand. You know, you know where where is how is the team being assembled here and how are they doing? It? Yeah, so there's the, so there's a core um, team here at Wallops, mm-hmm. and then um, uh, given that this is the first launch, we've we've got some specialist operators um, over from New Zealand, mm-hmm. um, and we also have some folks from uh, Long Beach. Um, headquarters yep. um, that, that come in so um, it's a little bit of a you know a mix a mix kind of match of, of various various things um, there's always certain specialists that we actually fly around all the world yep. um, we have some some folks in the US office that fly down to New Zealand every time we launch out of New Zealand so for us it's, it's just it, it's just that, you know, pretty much business as usual standard to move people around and we just Yes, certain expertise just just go wherever the rocket or the launch goes. Awesome. Okay. And in fact, down in New Zealand, we've had um, a bunch of LC two operators uh, launching vehicles down at LC one, uh, okay. obviously to it's, it's to gain their training. Yeah. Um, so and and we'll do the same the same thing. Like as as um, as things kind of swell, especially in you know some launches like this year we had that NRO launch that was fifteen days apart. So there's a requirement for extra operators mm-hmm. around that period. So we just move people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you. Yep. And I'll be around. Cheers. Bye.